Hi, hello, Becky. Hi, uh, hi, Dimitris. Hi, how are you? I am fine. How are you? That's fine. Welcome to Channel One. It's a pleasure, really. Thank you for having me. Okay. So, first of all, uh, tell us about your latest album, London Underground, punk rock dynamite. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice way to describe <laughs> it. Um, we've basically done it all ourselves. We wrote it, recorded it, um, produced it, and put it out on our own label, Last Rockers Records. So we've done it's totally do it yourself, mm-hmm. um, which we're very pleased with. Which is why we like yeah. it because that's the spirit, yeah. No outside interference whatsoever. It's all a hundred percent our own. Mm-hmm. And uh, what about uh, sniffing glue? The highlight maybe of uh, the record. Oh, that's your favourite, is it? Yeah, yeah. I can say that Mark Perry must feel very proud, you know. <laughs> it's not actually about his uh, fanzine, it's actually about um, yeah, I know. my days uh, mm-hmm. in Bristol as a, a young punk girl and uh, what some of my friends got up to, which included Sniffing Glue, mm-hmm. some of which, which sadly died. Um, so I'm not actually endorsing Sniffing Glue, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but um, it happened, so I've written a song about it. Mm. Becky, when did punk start for you, looking back? Um, in about 1977. Mm-hmm. Um, I was still at school and uh, a couple of my friends were into it. We were absolutely fascinated by it and also um, it was one of the first sort of rock movements uh, that had a lot of women involved with it. So we had other women we could look up to like um, Polly Styrene and Susie Sue. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, to have some girls involved for a change, whereas uh, rock at the time was just really very, very male-dominated. It was just men, so there wasn't really anyone we could identify with. Mm-hmm. Any change for an Athens gig? Maybe The Stranglers was in town just two weeks ago. What about the uh, Vice Squad? Um, I hope so. We have played Athens before. It was yeah. about three or four years ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I remember because our bass player got horrendously drunk and disappeared for two days. <laughs> uh, but we had a really mad gig there. Mm-hmm. Um, and we really enjoyed it. So, yeah, we'd be up for a gig somewhere nice and warm, <laughs> like <laughs> Athens, definitely. And what about uh, the John Peel uh, sessions of yours? You must be really proud. Mm-hmm. Um, we were kind of proud at the time because we were kids, so it was a really big deal for mm-hmm. us to get onto the John Peel show and go to the BBC studios and, you know, uh, work with top engineers and things, so we were really pleased at the time. Now when I hear my old stuff, I'm always like a little bit embarrassed. It must be, you know, like if you go to your mother's for tea and she gets a mm-hmm. picture of you out as a baby, you must also feel embarrassed too. Yeah. Um, but I'm still kind of proud of it. It's still good. Good times. Mm. Becky, can you tell me some details about the fantastic track? Uh, I really love Last Rockers for many years now, you know. <laughs> mm. I'm glad you like it so much. <laughs> yeah. um, when did we? I think we wrote it in about 1981, myself and the original Vice Squad guitar player who sadly died a couple of years ago, so he's no longer with us. Um, I just used to give him piles of lyrics often stuff I wrote at school in my exercise books and he would go away and try and put a tune to it and he came into rehearsal we used to rehearse in this uh, uh, scout hut next to the church it was like an old church hall and we got it for about one pound fifty or something for four hours rehearsal and he came in and he said oh I think I've written the perfect song yeah. and he sort of played it on his guitar and you know we yeah. worked it out together um, and I thought it was a weird song it is quite a, an unusual song for the time because um, It's, it sounds almost kind of gothic and doomy, which wasn't really what we were listening to at the time. We were listening to stuff like The Pistols and The Clash and the UK Subs, yeah. which were all a bit more up, upbeat. Um, and we recorded it, and I remember they put it on the jukebox at this pub we used to go in, in the middle of Bristol, and we were actually really quite embarrassed <laughs> when we heard it, because it sounded so different to everything else. Yeah. Um, but now I look back at it and think, no, it's cool, it's great, you know. It's done by kids. It sounds like it's done by kids, but it stood the test of time. It still goes down yeah, really great, well live when we song. play it. So yeah, that's cool. Fantastic track. Becky, can you give us a picture about the punk rock scene nowadays in England? Nowadays in England? Um, yeah. It's still going strong. There's still pockets of punk rockers all over the UK. Um, of all ages, you've got like some of the original people from the 70s, people that were around in the 80s, or second wave of the movement, are still into punk. Um, and you've got much, much younger people getting into it. We play to kids as young as 12 in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, we get a lot of mums and dads that were into us the first time round will bring their daughters and sons to 
to see us. Um, and in America, we have to do a lot of all ages shows um, because a lot of the kids are only 14 or 15. Yeah. And legally, they can't go into a venue that's got, you know, a bar. Mm -hmm. So we have to do a special under 21 show. And I would say that actually the majority of our American fans are under the age of 18 which is pretty cool. Yeah, of course. Um, so worldwide, not just in the UK, punk is alive and kicking, probably bigger and stronger than it ever was in the first place. Aha. Uh -huh. Which is good. Ah, yeah, very good. Becky, can we say that uh, we can find the original spirit of punk uh, through the internet today? In a way, you know, I'm talking about the do-it-yourself spirit. Many in the um, you yeah. can. The, the thing with the internet, though, is it started off as a really good thing where everybody could have a say, everybody could publish their work, whether it be music or the written word. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it has been overtaken by the big companies again, even though the record companies um, lost huge amounts of profits because of illegal downloading. They're back. If you look at MySpace and other sort of social network sites, you'll see that the, the major labels are still pushing their products yeah. with advertising and still placing their product all over the internet. So it's not as free as you think it is, as uh -huh. we think it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's still being run by big corporations. But that doesn't mean there isn't, you know, it's still a good thing. You can still have bands come from nowhere, um, put out their own product, make it available, uh, advertise their own gigs, etc., etc. whereas that wasn't really possible before, mm. except via things like fanzines. You're right. Okay, Becky, thank you very much for your time, really. Hope to see you in Athens soon. Oh, well, I hope to see you soon, too, uh, and uh, enjoy your lovely sunshine and your mad fans. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very okay, much, Becky. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.